In this video, we're going to be looking at mean and standard deviation using formula and also using the calculator. So it is important we know you are able to use a calculator in exam, but there are, there are times where you will need to know the formula and be able to apply it. So it is important to be able to do both. Okay, first thing is the mean. The mean uh, we should know already from our, our normal GCSE mathematics. Uh, your mean, and the other way of saying the mean is x bar. X bar is equal to sigma x over n. So sigma x means the sum of all the data values added up and then divided by n, which is the number of data values that you have. And also important, we realize, we remember that the mean of a population can also be referred to as mu. So standard deviation, and this is sigma. So the standard deviation is a measure of the variance from the mean uh, using all the values. So really, the simple way to think about the standard deviation, it is a spread of the data. So the bigger the standard deviation for a set of, set of data, the more spread out the data values will be. Okay, uh, also the standard deviation is the square root of the variance, so uh, which also leads us to this view formula here that variance is equal to standard deviation squared, so standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance. So sigma, uh, I'm just going to look at the one formula here for it, so our standard deviation is equal to this, so it is equal to, uh, sigma is equal to sigma of all the, the x values squared and then added up and then divided by n minus your x bar squared. Sometimes I would prefer to write it as this, so just sigma x squared over m, and then just writing out your mean the long way. So what you've got above is it's x bar over m squared, so that really is your standard deviation. Uh, so if you wanted to find your variance, you would just get rid. So sigma squared then would be equal to just this thing without this uh, this thing without the square root around it, and that's it. Okay, um, if we're just going to look at an, an example now on how we can apply this, and we're going to do this first of all without using the formula, and then we're uh, without using the calculator, sorry, and then we're going to use the calculator. Okay, so here we're going to find the mean and standard deviation of the following numbers. So we've got 42, 44, 45, 48, 50, 51, 53, 54, 56, and 57. So first thing, just write down your formulas. I've got them here already x bar, your mean is equal to sigma x over n, so that's the sum of all your x values divided by n. If you just add up all your x values, what you're going to get is 500. So that is just going to be 500 over n. n, we've got 10 numbers, so 500 over 10, which is just 50. Your sigma, your standard deviation, the formula for it is the square root of sigma x squared over n minus your x bar squared. So just over here, I'm just going to work out what my sigma x squared is. I'm showing the working out for this in this particular one, uh, but I wouldn't normally do this, to be honest. I would just do this on the calculator to work it out. So what sigma x squared means, it means every x value squared and then add it up. So you've got 42 squared plus 40, oh, sorry, 44 squared plus all the way, all of the other ones all the way along to plus 57 squared. And if you do that, you will get 25,000. 240. We can now fire everything into the uh, formula. Sigma x squared was 25,240. My n was 10. My x bar we've worked out is to be 50. And when you do this to three significant figures, as it is normal to give in a statistic exam, it is going to be 4.90 to three sig figs. Okay, we're going to look now at how we would go about doing this on the calculator. Okay, using the calculator method, you can see I've set this out for us, uh, what we need uh, to have. But the first thing we need to do is how, how do we actually use the calculator to do this. First thing I would advise you all to do is to change your calculator slightly. It's set up that there are no frequencies on. So here, it would be it's perfect for this example anyway without the frequencies, but it's, it's just as easy just to have the frequencies on. You'll see why when you, when you do it. Okay, to put the frequencies on, hit Shift and Mode. And then go to statistics and then frequency on it's the only option you have and then uh, when you go then when you, what you do is you press mode and then six and that takes you to a statistics bit and you can go to the variable section and then you put in the x values and the corresponding frequencies now to do this you would hit 42 and press equals that would take you down and hit 44 press equals 45 equals 48 equals 50 equals 51 equals 53 equals 54 equals 56 equals 57 equals and you'll see all of their frequencies by default are on, on one so it doesn't make it any more complicated when you have the frequencies on you might as well just have it on and then it will work for other examples 
And in another example, when you did need to change the frequencies, you would just have to move right with the we selector in your calculator and change the, the whatever frequencies you had to change. Okay, so that's all the data in. What you then do is press AC, and don't be worried about pressing AC. That information is now stored in your calculator. You now need to be able to access that information. So you do that by pressing uh, OP, OPTN, which I'm guessing that stands for option. So you press option and then go to variable uh, calc, uh, so variable calculation. And then you need to be able to access all of these things. So some of them uh, you need to scroll down to get. Uh, so you need sigma x, sigma x squared, m, x bar, and sigma x. So sigma x means the standard deviation of that population. And this over here is our population. So when you go through your calculator and you do all of that, what you should get is your sigma x is equal to uh, 500. Your sigma x squared is 252400. Your n is 10. Your x bar is 50, and your sigma x is equal to 4.90. Again, I had to give that, that to three sig figs. That's it done. Okay, we're now gonna look and see how we can use mean and standard deviation from a frequency distribution. So if the, it is a, a, a continuous interval where you've got uh, lower, lower boundaries, number of boundaries, you need to find the midpoint interval. That doesn't apply in this example, but it will apply in the next one. We're gonna use this formula really uh, for this. So this really is the one that we're gonna focus on uh, to do this. But this example says, find the mean and standard deviation of the data below. So you can see we need sigma, we need sigma fx, we need sigma f, and you'll also need your, for your, your mean, you'll need, sorry, sigma fx squared, sigma f, and you'll also need your uh, sigma fx. So uh, we need to find those two things. So you add in another couple of rows here. You've got your fx column, fx row, and your fx squared row. So f times the x, that's just gonna be 60. And then I'll just do these very quickly. That's gonna be 90, that's gonna be 56, that's gonna be 56 again, and that's gonna be 18. And the fx squared so what fx squared is it's the x value squared and then multiplied by the f so the x value is 5 5 squared times 12 is going to give you 300 and then same again is going to give you 540 and 392 and then 448 and then 162 so what we need remember we needed our sigma f so the sum of all the f values uh, so the sum of all the f values was 44. We need the sum of the fx values. And if you add those up, you'll get 280. And don't panic if you see a very big number here. It's very typical for these to be big numbers. So 1842. So that's actually a fairly small one for the sigma fx. Normally, they, they could be tens of thousands, whatever it happens to be. So uh, this one... We're good to go with our formulas. Fx, sorry, x bar is equal to sigma fx divided by sigma f. Uh, in this case, that's 280 over 44, which is equal to 6.3623 sig figs. And your sigma, we'll just write out the formula again. That's sigma fx squared over sigma f minus sigma fx over sigma f that's squared so that was my mean i could have just written that out but i think just uh, just as easy to put it in that way and if we do that out that is going to be 1842 all over 44 minus and uh, that's 44 in the bottom line again the top line is now 280 that bit gets squared and the square root of all of that and that works out to be 1.17 to 3 sig figs. Okay, in this next example, we've got a group frequency distribution. So the first thing you've got to do is find your midpoints. So it's time, so 0 to 1. Uh, so your lower value is 0, your upper value, upper lower class boundary is 0, your upper class boundary is 1. So 0 plus 1 is 1 divided by 2 is 0.5. Uh, next one, 1 plus 2 divided by 2 is going to be 1.5. Go all the way along with those uh, to get all of your midpoint values. 
So this is your X column. So you need in a group frequency, you need to add in your X column. You then can fill in your FX column and your FX squared column, which I will do now. I'll just pause the video and then just get that done. Okay, so you can see I filled in my FX column. So remember that was just my X value times my or my F value times my X value, and I filled in my FX squared column. So it was my F value times my X value, and it uh, the X value is squared. Also, I've, I've summed up these columns. So this is sigma f. That's my sum of my f column. Sigma fx, the sum of my fx column. Sigma fx squared, the sum of my fx squared column. We're good now to just fire those into the formula. So the same again. x bar is equal to sigma fx over uh, sigma f. And if you do that, that's just going to be 437.5 over, oops, sorry, uh, over my sigma f, which is 115. And if you do that, you got 3.80 to 3 sig figs. And my sigma, my standard deviation formula again is sigma fx squared divided by sigma f minus sigma fx over my sigma f. Up it gets squared and then the whole thing gets square rooted. So if you do that out, it is just a lot of writing, unfortunately. Uh, 2238.75 all over 115 minus, and then we have the 437.5 all over 115, all squared. And when you do that, you get 2.2323 sig figs, and that's it. If you were to do that example on the calculator, and there's absolutely no reason why not, uh, you would still have to work out. You this would be your these two columns would be your starting information. You would still have to whoop, you'd still have to work out this uh, third column here. Uh, so you would have to do that, and then you're good to go. You've got your f values and your, your x values and corresponding f values. You go through the same process as we had uh, a couple of examples ago, where you you'd go to your menu six on your calculator. And you put the variables in, you put the x values in with their corresponding f values, and you work through it. And then once you can do that, you press AC, then you go to the option, and then you need to be able to get all of those things. So you need to be able to get your fx, sigma fx, sigma f, sorry, sigma fx, and your sigma fx squared. And then obviously state your x bar and state your sigma as well. Next example is one where you have to find. Uh, the new standard deviation, uh, so it's a bit of a problem question. It says the mean of n numbers is 8, and the standard deviation is 2.4. If 18 is added to the list of numbers, the mean is 9. Find n and the new standard deviation. So we don't know how many numbers we have to start with. So we don't really know an awful lot. We have to just get started and see what we, what we can do. So it tells you, first of all, that the mean is equal to 8. So the mean, remember, uh, the mean is sigma x over n and that is equal to 8. So that's all we know at the start. I'm just going to rearrange this and say that means uh, that sigma x is equal to 8n. I've got two unknowns in this thing so I'm going to call that equation 1. Hopefully I can come back from that. Uh, it says in the, in the next part of the question, next sentence, it says uh, if 18 is added to a list of numbers then the mean is 9. So also what we know if you took the total of the first lot of numbers and you added the 18 and you divided it by uh, the new total, so if the original total was n, the new total is n plus 1. So that's going to be equal to 9. So if we multiply across by the n plus 1, you're going to get sigma x plus 18 is equal to 9 upon n plus 1, which means sigma x is equal to 9n plus 9 minus 18, so that's going to be sigma x, uh, sigma x is equal to 9n uh, minus 9. Sorry, that's going to be equal to 9n minus 9. And I'm going to call that equation 2. So we've got two equations, two unknowns. We can now solve that. Where we know we're going to, all we're going to do is sub equation 1 into equation 2 
So if you put equation 1 into equation 2, you're going to have, instead of a sigma x, we're going to have 8n is equal to 9n minus 9. We better work out that means 9 is equal to 9n minus 8n, so 9 is equal to n. So you've got your 9 equals n. And then after that, we can work out, if put, your, uh, put that back into equation 1, and you're going to get sigma x is equal to 8 times 9, so sigma x is equal to 72. So what we know so far, we know our n is equal to 9, and we know our uh, sigma x is equal to 72. Okay, next part of this, it says, uh, it says that the, uh, the standard deviation is 2.4. So this is for the first nine values, the standard deviation is 2.4. So I'm just going to say for n is equal to 9, 2.4, that's our standard deviation, and it equals the square root of sigma x squared over n, and we know n is equal to 9, minus my, I'll write down that's, this is my uh, sigma x, and sigma x we knew was 72, and our n was equal to 9, and that is squared. I could have been a wee bit smarter, but that, that we already knew that this is our sigma x over sigma x over your n is your uh, mean, and we already knew our mean was equal to 8. So I could have I could have put that in as 8, but it's not really going to waste an awful lot of time. So tidy it up again, we'll get rid of that thing. So that's 2.4 is equal to the square root of sigma x squared over 9 minus 8 squared. So we have an equation, an ugly looking equation, but it's an equation with one unknown, and our unknown thing is sigma x squared. So the first thing I'm going to do is square both sides. So square 2.4, you're going to get 5.76 is equal to sigma x squared over 9, then minus the 8 squared, I'm just going to write that as 64. Bring that across then, 5.76 plus the 64 is equal to sigma x squared over 9, then 9 times all of that, so 9 times the 5.76 plus the 64 is equal to sigma x squared. Therefore, my sigma x squared is equal to 627.84. Okay, well, the whole purpose of us doing that was we needed to find, uh, we find n, we've done that, and we need to find the new standard deviation. So this is for all, we're going to do that now for all 10 values, for all 10 values. So the important thing is, uh, they tell us 18 is added. So we know, we know our sigma is going to be equal to the square root of sigma x squared. So that was my first nine values. Uh, it's all squared and added up. And then you, uh, you come along and somebody adds in another 18, so it needs to get squared. And that's divided by 10, because we have 10 values. And then the sum, sigma x, for the first lot of values, we've got that, plus somebody comes in and adds in another 18, and that's divided by 10, and that's going to get squared as well. So we're just going to put in those values that we know. We know sigma x squared, we've now worked out, be 627.84 then plus 18 squared. I would just do this all my calculator wouldn't do any more working out of what I'm doing here. And then the sigma x, we worked that out to be 72 plus 18. That's all divided by 10, and then that's squared. And then the whole thing square rooted, sorry. And then if you do that, you will get 3.77, 3 3.77 to 3 sig fix. So just read the question again. Uh, it says, find n. We found our n down here. It was 9. And find a new standard deviation. We've done that. It was 3.77. Done. Okay. You're ready to do uh, page 9, exercise 1F. And there's extra questions as well if you want. Uh, it's there on page 8. So going back on ourselves, but just do it in that order. There, page 9, exercise 1F are the more important ones. Then page 8, exercise 2E as well, if you need any extra ones and any, any problems, get in touch.